Hey guys, Sergeant M. You know, there was a question on the airbrush forum about um, how sandable are Auto Air's uh, sealers. Well, this is a uh, little metal panel I got from the hardware store, about two or three bucks. And uh, I already had some, I already have some Auto Air sealer white on here um, that I've actually already sanded down. But for the purpose of this video, what I've done is I've, is I've gone and mixed up a uh, sealer gray, which would just be a mixture of sealer white and sealer dark. You can see right there on the side, on the side how it sprayed. Um, spraying it through my uh, Vega 2000 with a .5 needle nozzle setup, and I'm just going to demonstrate for you uh, how sandable these sealers actually are and how quick you can actually get them. Uh, sandable. I've reduced it uh, for the airbrush with the brand new 4012 high performance reducer. So this stuff, if you haven't used the 4012 yet or the W500 from Wicked, I highly recommend you get some because it is an outstanding product. It makes auto air and Wicked flow like a urethane. But I'm hoping to get a review video up on that uh, sometime soon. I'm just going to cover the panel. I'm going in lightly with the first coat. I know I'm not going to have adhesion problems because I'm going over sealer white to begin with. But if I'm shooting sealer, this is how I approach it. Very light passes. You can let that dry. Now, you know, normally I would, uh, if I was using the 4011 reducer, I would work a lot slower. But um, I know with the 4012, uh, issues with things like pigment migration, uh, spidering, um, runs, sags, with the new reducer, those issues are now few and far between. So going, a little, going in a little heavier now, not quite full coverage. And since I am spraying out of an airbrush, Notice I'm moving up and down and then right to left. This will help prevent streaking. Whereas if I was just moving in one direction, it would be streaked all, all crazy. So as you can tell right now, that panel is is wet. It's thoroughly wet. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to come in just with the air with my out of my airbrush. And help dry this. Now, this isn't curing, but it's drying. Curing and drying are, are, are two different things. Auto air wicked um, you know they cure over time with air movement and actually to the right of the camera there is a uh, fan that I have extracting any overspray I could turn that around and help dry this but you know with the air from the airbrush it's uh, it's enough that you might be able to hear the compressor on the background. That's my modified Harbor Freight compressor. I have a uh, fridge motor on there. Now, 
And a lot of times people will ask, well, how do you know when it's dry? Well, if you can see up here, it's got a little bit of a shine to it. Look down here, it's dull, it's matte. Down here it's dry, up here it's still wet. So that's how you know when it's dry. As far as actual, actual curing times, you know, I don't know those off the top of my head, but I will put a link in the description to the AutoWare um, technical sheet that will cover all of the uh, drying and curing times. Now another thing to speed up actual curing, you could use heat. It's not required anymore. A couple years ago it was required to to fully cure the paint, but it's not required anymore with the new uh, formulas they have out. Uh, not specifically the reducer, but the actual formula in the sealers and the paints themselves. So here I'm going to go, I think this will be my last coat. Put this on real heavy. I'm, I'm, I've got the trigger wide open as I'm spraying. Up and down first, now I'll come back in and go left to right. You can even see the streaking somewhat. See that streaking in there. Using about a 60% overlap. And now you guys can see how wet that panel actually is. Look down here on the bottom in this in this section right here. It's actually starting to dry already just with the air movement here in the shop. Uh, to the left of the camera, there's a uh, small window that's open in the basement here where my shop is. And that's open. Got the fan over here to the right of the camera. So that's actually creating a cross draft for me. Uh, on the fan, there is a... You know what? Let me just turn the camera around. On the fan furnace filter so that's going to catch any any uh, particulates and filter those out and I'm going to go ahead and stop this right here clean up my airbrush and everything I'm going to give this panel about an hour to uh, fully cure just with air movement and then I'll come back and I'll show you exactly um, how textured this is because I can see it I don't think you can uh, but I can see the, some texture in there, um, and I'll show you guys exactly how sandable this stuff is. So stand by. All right, so I'll show you this. You can see my reflection there, sort of. Um, the panel is still wet. What I've done, took that same fan and just turned it around, and now it's blowing. I just took that same fan to turn it around. Now it's blowing on the... Uh, on the panel. That's going to help dry it. It's going to help cure it. Outside temperature, I'm going to say we're somewhere in the upper 50s right now. I'm not sure. I didn't check it before uh, I started filming. There's some more of the Gixxer parts for those guys that have been waiting on that. But more on that later. So there we go. Just drying, just with air. Vega 2000, badass airbrush. Get one. All right, I'll be back. All right, so it's about an hour and a half later, and the fan has been sitting on the panel, blowing on it, curing it. Went and fixed a computer problem for my dad. Had to go take a take care of an issue with uh, my buddy's dog. Help him out with that because he got loose. He's a pit bull, Sharpe mix. Didn't want him running around the neighborhood, scaring people, although he's just a big baby. So, I have some 500 grit sandpaper on a rubber sanding block that you get from the hardware store. I know it's an odd grit, but I'm actually going to follow that up with a, uh, a gray scotch bright. And 
Now, if you run your hand over, over the panel, it, it does feel pretty smooth already. However, um, it could be a little smoother. So, I'm just going to take, start sanding, just like I normally would with anything else. Obviously, around the edges, you want to be careful you don't cut through. And I'm not being overly aggressive with it. Look here, there's a little spot, there's a high spot uh, on the panel. That's kind of rubbing through to the to the white, but that's okay. Because if I'm gonna put anything over this, I'm obviously gonna use a base coat, white, black, blue, you know, whatever. Whatever the base coat, the project calls for. This isn't my base coat, it's just to prepare the surface for the base coat. See, another high spot right there. That could be from the from board too. It's not a perfect board. Yeah, I felt like it was behind there. So, you know, yeah, if I'm Sanding somebody's motorcycle pins. I obviously won't have to worry about the board or anything other, any other surface that might have something underneath the panel to uh, to burn through like that. So now I'll just take a gray scotch bright. I hope my right arm isn't blocking your view. Great scotch bright follow up from the uh, sandpaper, sanding block. And now, that surface is ready for tack cloth and base coat. And normally what I do also when I'm tacking Take an air source, whether it's from your spray gun, if you're about the base coat to clear, or if you're airbrushing, take the air and kind of blow it off too. That way, that way it pushes around any other contaminants that, that uh, you may not see. But there we go, that surface is now ready. Much smoother. Down here can a little bit more. And let's say this was motorcycle tins or a fairing or a hood or a tailgate. And let's say that I did sand through that sealer into the primer or even 
if I'm just being super aggressive and not watching what I'm doing, let's say I sand it down to the metal. Well, that's gonna have to be repaired. But you know, if it was just if it was just through the sealer into the primer, and you could go back through with one more pass, I'd go one light pass, maybe even two super light passes, and cover that up. And if necessary, probably wouldn't even need the sanding, just go in with a scotch bright. And the surface is then again ready for your base coat or airbrushing or whatever you're gonna do next. I hope if you know if <clears throat> excuse me, if you've been if you've been wondering about the sealers, how sandable they are, how long should you wait? How do I cure it? What if I sand it? Am I gonna sand through? How do I know if I'm being too aggressive? Well, 500 grit sandpaper on a rubber, solid rubber, hard rubber sanding block and the gray scotch bright. And I only burn through that one little area here, this one little area here. <clears throat> and that was only because of imperfections in the board that this is nailed to. If this was an actual project that I'm doing for a customer, obviously I would take more care and make sure that, uh, you know, um, I'm not sanding against something that's got a rough surface like that. So, there it is guys, there you have it. If you have any questions, of course, leave a comment below, or better yet, go visit the airbrushforum.com. A lot of cool people hang out there, myself included, I'm not saying that I'm cool, but a lot of cool people are, are, are on there. I'm one of the administrators along with Tony D. You guys know him from Airbrush Tricks, the Airbrush Tricks YouTube channel. Um, but a lot of cool people hang out there. They're more than willing, even more people that have more knowledge than I do. I can, I, I always learn from, from people there on the forum. So, you know, if I can't respond right away to a comment here on YouTube, go, go visit the airbrushforum.com. Plenty of people there that will, will help you out. Even if you think that the question you have is the dumbest thing anybody could ask, we don't care. We don't flame. We are pro newbies, pro first timers. So if you're just getting into it, go check it out. There's a lot of cool tutorials there. All of our moderators are super awesome. There's even a, um, uh, a weekly giveaway that we have going on right now to win a custom Badger Renegade Velocity. I'll have to do a separate video on this one, but I'll show you. Renegade Velocity, and this thing, you can't buy this, you can only win it. I know this video is getting a little long, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but if you know the regular Velocity, this is the one you can buy. Gunmetal Gray, it's an awesome airbrush, but Kenneth Badger took that airbrush and went one step further and totally tricked this thing out. The black finish, custom engraving, satin black, stealthy, super sexy. Look at that thing. And you can win that just by being a member at the airbrushforum.com. Thanks a lot for checking it out. I'm Sergeant M. You got any questions? Comment, question, leave it. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I hope I'm not leaving anything out. I'll catch you next time.